Now that we have a good idea of how the basic acute angle works, let's take a look at some of these special angles. All right, now these angles here, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, are so-called special because, well, the answers here that they give are insert form. Okay, so there will be times where the question requires you to leave your answer in insert form, and therefore you have to know um, very um, clearly, okay, very well that you know some of these special angles can be changed into insert form. All right. So before we go any further as to how to memorize it, okay, I'm um, quite certain that your teacher will teach you how to memorize it. All right. Um, before we go into that, okay, let's take a look at um, some of these relationships here. Okay. Now you may notice that uh, there are two answers for sine 45 degrees. Well, they are actually not two answers. They they are the same. Okay. If you press a calculator, you realize that uh, they have the same value of 0 0.707. All right. Anyway, so what exactly is going on here? Well, why is there two? Well. It's very simple. You learn this in certs. Okay, it's called rationalization. So if you rationalize your one over square root two, all right, you multiply by root two, multiply by root two on the uh, numerator as well. Okay, you get root two over two. Okay, so that's precisely what happens here. All right, simply rationalize it. Okay. Um, now something else that may caught your eye will be, you know, hey, that means to say sine forty five degrees is the same as cosine 45 degrees. Well, yes. Okay? And you, you were just about to find out that sine and cosine actually has a very, very close relationship. Okay? They are more or less like close cousins. Okay? Which is what am I talking about. You may even realize something else here. That cosine 30 degrees is the same as your sine 60 degrees. Okay? Alright? And something else sine 30 degrees is the same as cosine 60 degrees and of course the easiest to spot is obviously sine 45 and cosine 45 will give you the same answer let's not talk about tangent for, for a moment let's just talk about sine cosine first so just what exactly happens here well I did mention to you that um, you know sine and cosine are actually very closely related just how so how close are they related all right the easiest way to illustrate the close relationships between sine and cosine is to show you um, what exactly goes on in a right angle triangle. Now here we have a right angle triangle and let's say this angle is called theta. Well, and if this angle is called theta, then of course this angle here will be known as, I mean, obviously 90 degrees minus theta, isn't it? Well, because this is 90 degrees, so in a side triangle that will be 180, so 180 minus 90 minus theta will give you 90 minus theta. Okay, now let's call this side A and this side B and the uh, hypotenuse side C. And uh, we do know that, well, obviously, if we want to sine theta, okay, we will have well, opposite side, which is A over the hypotenuse side, which is C. So sine theta will give us A over C. Alright, simple enough. Yeah, that's not that bad. Okay, now this is provided that you are taking the perspective of this angle called theta. Okay, then A will be the opposite side. Now, but then we also know that if now I change my perspective and I'm now interested in looking at this angle. Okay, now the side A is actually the adjacent side for this angle, isn't it? According to this angle's perspective, A is the adjacent side, while B is now the opposite side. So we do know that if we were to cosine this angle, 90 degrees minus theta, Okay, we will have adjacent side over the hypotenuse side, which is A over C. So we start to realize that, hey, you know, this is A over C, and this is A over C as well. So therefore, I mean, of course, you can safely conclude that, well, sine theta is the same as cosine 90 degrees minus theta. Then this becomes one of the most important trigger um, results. Okay, that you have to know. Okay, that sine theta is the same as cosine 19 degrees minus away theta. And that is why, alright, sine 30 degrees is the same as cosine 60 degrees. Well, because, alright, sine 30 degrees, okay, is the same as cosine 60. How do I get 60? Well, 60 is 90 degrees minus 30 degrees. And that is why sine 30 degrees is equal to cosine 60 degrees. Now you may also start to realize something rather interesting going on here. That 
okay of course um, the same reason goes okay applies that uh, cosine 30 will then be of course sine 60 okay but the interesting thing that you should take note of is that this sine and cosine whenever they are equal the two angles add up to be 90 degrees and what this means is well we can now also deduce that well sine 10 degrees will be of course cosine 80 degrees and of course we can even go on further sine 20 degrees is the same as cosine 70 degrees I mean you can always verify this with your own calculator okay you can take a pause at this video now and press in your calculator these values to check if they are the same alright and they will be the same okay so well, this is perhaps one of the uh, ways that can help you to try to remember, okay, um, these special angles, right? Because, well, basically, it is the same value but different arrangement, all right? Now, the next thing that we want to talk about, okay, is of course the tangent, all right? So, you may start to realize that, of course, well, you don't see any pattern in tangent, right? Tangent 30 degrees has got nothing to do with anything to do with cosine or sine okay but well that may be a little bit wrong because tangent is indeed somehow um, related to sine cosine well of course the two values here again um, is because of the rationalization of the sets okay but there is okay a certain relationship to link up um, tangent with the rest of the answers here just what exactly is that well you will need to figure out I mean you will need to know this Okay, I mean, not necessarily you have to figure out yourself, I can tell you, but um, you have to know this, okay? That tangent x is the same as sine x over cosine x. And what this means is tangent is actually a ratio of sine and cosine. Alright, now the next question you may ask is, whoa, just why is that so? I mean, just how, how do you know? Okay, well, besides the fact that you can see it from here, that if you take half divided by square root 3 over 2, you will get 1 over square root 3. I mean, you can do this with a calculator. Okay, but why? Why so? Well, again, we'll just make use of a right angle triangle to help us illustrate the, uh, the relationship, okay, or rather the, the proof, the reason why, um, why tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Now, let's say we have this angle called theta here. Again, this is side A, this is side B, and this is side C. So we know from our, uh, well, younger days, if you may, right, that sine theta is equal to opposite of hypotenuse, so that is the ratio of um, A over C. And we also know that cosine theta is, well, B over C. So, we have the ratio of A to C, which is psi, where this A is to C. We have the ratio of B is to C, and that's represented by cosine and B over C. However, we don't have any uh, ratio for A to B. And that is why we have a tangent, isn't it? So we know that, well, tangent theta is equal to A over B, opposite side over the adjacent side. But you may then realize that this A over B here, okay, you can actually get A over B when we divide A over C, okay, with B over C. So, of course, you can do this division yourself, isn't it? I mean, you learned this in primary school, A over C divided by B over C, okay? You know that you would change to multiply. So, we will get A over C multiplied by C over B, okay? This is what you learned in primary school, really. So, um, the C and the C will cancel each other, and of course, we're left with the answer A over B, which is our tangent. So, what we realize is that, hey, you know, this becomes A over B. And therefore, we can safely say that, well, when we take psi, the ratio of psi, divide by the ratio of cosine, we'll end up with tangent. Okay? Which is actually the ratio of A is to B. Okay? So, with that kind of uh, understanding that we, we know all right, now, um, it is actually now very easy for us to see uh, how we get the value of uh, 1 over square root 3. Well, because we know that tangent 30 degrees is the same as sine 30 degrees divided by cosine 30 degrees. And we do know that, well, sine 30 degrees is half, cosine 30 degrees is square root 3 over 2, okay? And, of course, we know, if you know how to simplify this in the 
double time so you can do this very quickly all right the denominator cancel each other we have 1 over square root 3 and that's how we get the 1 over square root 3 okay and of course it is very easy to see that you know when you have sine 45 degrees divided by cosine 45 degrees we will get easily get one I mean because cosine 45 degrees and sine 45 degrees are the same value so when you have the same value divided by itself you get one okay and of course likewise we have this square root 3 over 2 divided by half well which is actually square root 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 isn't it okay and we'll get square root 3 okay so uh, well, there are actually certain type of uh, relationships uh, going on here that can actually help you memorize your special angles okay now I know that there are certain relationship meaning to say if I know sine 30 degrees I should know what is cosine 60 degrees because they are the same well if I know sine 45 degrees I would know what is cosine 45 degrees and of course if I know uh, sine 60 I'll know cosine uh, 30 so if I know cosine 30 and sine 30 of course I can find my tangent 30 no problem yes I know but just how am I going to memorize all this I mean look at it Oh my goodness, it, it looks so difficult to remember. Well, there is actually a way for you to cheat this through. Okay, uh, what I mean by cheat is, of course, um, legally cheat. Um, just what am I talking about? Well, you do have a calculator with you all the time, okay, even if in, the, in the examination hall. So, let me show you how you are going to, uh, how you can make use of the calculator to help you get to this search form. Let me bring up my calculator. Okay, now, Let's say we are interested in sine 60 degrees. Okay, your question requires you to leave your sine 60 degrees in third form. Right, somehow, somewhere, you, you've got to leave it in third form. So, you know, you, go, you can't remember that sine 60 degrees is square root 3 over 2, right? I mean, who can remember that? Okay, so anyway, so you go to your calculator, you key in 60 degrees, and you key in sine. Whoa, this is what you see. Okay, 0.6. 0 0.866 yada yada oh, oh my goodness this is one big chunk how are you going to know that this is the same as square root 3 over 2 okay now the trick here is this okay well, one way of course um, you may just memorize it so every time you see 0 0.866 you know that it's square root 3 over 2 alright but uh, of course this is not a very easy way to do it okay because you're not fully using uh, what is in front of you the calculator and what you can do now is you take this value knowing of course you must first know that this is a special angle answer okay so you know that this is a third form you just don't know what third is this I mean whether is it square root 3 over 2 whether is it 1 over square root 2 I mean I, I don't know I'm not very sure so what do I do I know it's a third so what I do is the trick is of course I go square this answer now do not do anything to it just use the entire answer from the calculator okay key in square you get 0 0.75 very nice now of course um, your calculator we should have a function to change um, this into a fraction okay but even though if you if you don't have okay just like this calculator that I have on screen now it, it doesn't have a function to change this into a fraction so you should know that 0 0.75 is actually 3 quarter alright 3 over 4 okay now what this tells us okay is this that you know if I were to sign 60 degrees my answer is actually a bunch of numbers that I don't know why it's that but I know if I were to square the entire answer I'll get 3 quarter and therefore what this tells me now is that the original answer before the square will be of course the square root of 3 quarter so the square root of 3 quarter then of course becomes square root 3 over 2 okay so this is one way you can make full use of a calculator um, in that f in that in that way like cheating okay cheat your way through so called okay but it's not really cheating because everyone has the calculator in front of them okay it's a matter of how you use it all right now let's take a look at um sine 45 then all right shall we let's bring up the calculator once more okay we go to 45 so we key in 45 degrees and we want to sign this 45 degrees again we see a big chunk of numbers here all right we have no idea insert how does this look like okay so the trick is of course we go square the answer we get 0 0.5 and that what means is that well the answer is actually 1 over 2 and to get the answer that we want okay that means without the square is of course uh, to square root the half and square root half is actually uh, 1 over square root 2 alright and we can actually do the same for tangent 
Okay, so let's just take a look at tangent then. Tangent 30 degrees is 1 over square root 3. So tangent 30 degrees, bring our calculator once more. So we go to 30, okay, and we go tangent. Again, we see this big chunk of numbers here. Well, again, I have no idea, okay, what is this? Whether is this square root 1, of, 1 over square root 3, square root 3 over 2? I, I have no idea. I, mean, I can't remember numbers very well. So what do I do? Well, I go square it, and I get this. Okay, now again, like I said, some of your calculators can change this into fractions. But some of the calculators, like this one now, can't do that. Or what do you do? Well, you should know that 0 0.333, this recurring decimal, is actually one third. Alright, so we do know that tangent 30 degrees, okay, when we square it, okay, we'll get one third. And therefore, without the square, that means the square root, we get 1 over square root 3. Okay, of course the same uh, goes for this uh, as well. Alright, uh, tangent 60, go ahead, play around with your own calculator, okay, and see if you are able to figure this out on your own, alright, without uh, really have to memorize it hardcore, you know what I mean? Okay?